lecture we are going to cover the convection heat transfer and the types of convection heat transfer that is the force convection and natural convection. Convection heat transfer is the mechanism of heat transfer through a fluid in the presence of bulk fluid motion. Two types of convection heat transfer, one is called as natural convection or free convection heat transfer and other is called as force convection. In case of natural convection or free convection, any fluid motion is caused by natural means such as buoyancy effect like example is the rise of warmer fluid and the fall of cooler fluid. In case of force convection, the fluid is forced to flow over a surface or in a tube by external means such as a pump or fan. The pumps are used when you have to pump the liquid and the fan is used when you have to pump the gases. When it is passing through the tube, it is called as internal flow and when it passes over a surface, it is called as external flow. To understand the effect of the mechanism of force convection, let's consider here is the one hot plate and let assume that the temperature T1 is greater than temperature T2 and this material has a thermal conductivity equals to Ks. The heat is transferred from the high temperature to low temperature according to Fourier law and this Q conduction through solid 1 bottom plate to top plate is given by Q conduction of the solid by Fourier law is minus K of solid multiplied by A that is the top surface area of this plate multiplied by dt by dy that is the temperature gradient through solid. Now over this heated plate there is a fluid moving with a free stream velocity equals to u infinity at temperature equals to t infinity. As the fluid will progress over the plate, we will find that there is a temp, uh, velocity profile. The velocity at the point is 0 and the velocity will go on increasing. You will find that the velocity will changes because of the presence of shear or the presence of viscosity over the surface. The coordinates axis at point at the top of the plate, this one is y axis and this one is 0. Near this surface, there is a direct contact between the fluid molecule and the solid wall. So there is a conduction takes place from the wall surface at temperature T2 to the molecule of this one. So it can be done as the Q conduction. This takes place between solid and liquid interface or we can say fluid interface. And is given by minus k of fluid multiplied by a and is considered as dt by dy at y equal to 0. That is the slope of this curve with respect to y at y equal to 0. That is exactly at this point. Then once the surfaces get heated at this molecule become lighter or is forced up because of the stream and therefore the heat is transferred from this point to this point is purely by convection. So Q convection purely in the liquid in the liquid phase is given by the Newton's law of cooling which is given as area multiplied by H the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the difference of temperature between the hot surface that is T2 and the temperature of the surrounding fluid that equals to T infinity. So According to the steady state heat conduction, the heat transfer by conduction in the solid wall must equal to heat conduction between the liquid particle molecule and the solid wall and is same as the convection of heat transfer in the fluid. It is known that the velocity at this point is zero. This is called as zero slip condition and this assumption is also no slip condition. As a result of this, the heat transfer from this solid wall to the fluid layer adjacent to the surface is purely by conduction that is why we have used the Fourier conduction here Fourier law of conduction and then the, the same heat is transferred by means of convection. So if we equate the equation number 1, 2 and 3 1, 2 and 3 we can find out the value of H. So if we equate the equation number 2 and equation number 3 we can solve for H and we get the value of A will be get cancelled H equals to minus of K of fluid del t by del y at y equals to 0 divided by the difference is t2 minus t infinity. Until the value of the heat transfer coefficient varies along the direction of flow 
and the mean or average convection heat transfer coefficient for a surface is determined by averaging the local heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface. So number of times is also called as local heat transfer coefficient or is called as field width transfer coefficient. To find out the total value of h bar we have to integrate hx with respect to dx and it is divided by integral dx from limit 0 to L and 0 to L. So you can use this heat transfer coefficient. Same. Now to understand to solve this value of hx we require the value of del t by del y. So we should know exactly how the temperature changes with respect to y. That is we want the temperature profile equation. How this temperature changes with respect to the vertical distance y. To investigate this first let us understand what is a hydrodynamic boundary layer and once we know the idea about the hydrodynamic boundary layer we can go for thermal boundary layer and then we can establish the relation for del t by del y. Now consider here is the flow of a fluid over a flat plate. The velocity and the temperature of the fluid are t infinity and u infinity. The fluid can be considered as adjacent layers on the top of each layers. H which is the perpendicular to the direction of flow is called as leading edge and the, this one is called as trailing edge. X and Y axis on this point. So at leading edge X is equals to 0 and at trailing edge X equals to L. Now assuming no slip conditions at the wall we will find here that the velocity boundary layer will grow like this. So it has grow like this. Then we have a first we have a laminar flow. Then we have a transition, somewhat transition, and then we have a remaining flow is turbulent flow. So basically there are three regions. One is called as laminar region from leading up to this point. Then we have a transition flow, and the remaining flow is called as turbulent flow. For the wall, we have a velocity equals to zero, and as we move towards the y-axis you will get the velocity equals to u infinity. So this value is approximately equals to 0.99 of u infinity and outside it the fluid is moving with the free stream velocity equals to u infinity. So region that is enclosed from the solid wall up to this point is called as hydrodynamic bond layer and this thickness is represented by delta h where delta h is called as hydrodynamic bond. The friction between the two adjacent layers acts similar to the drag force or the friction force. The drag force per unit area is called as shear stress and is obtained by Newton's law of viscosity which is given by tau equals to mu into du by dy that is called as velocity gradient where mu is called as dynamic viscosity and the unit of mu is pascal second or the unit of mu is kg per meter per second. The local shear stress at any distance x is calculated from tau x equals to mu into du by dy at that particular distance x equals to 0. So since the velocity gradient is changing every time we have a different value of du by dy at x equal to 0. So this shear stress is a strong function of the distance x measured from leading edge. And in general this value is given by Cf multiplied by 1 by 2 rho into u infinity square. Rho into infinity square into half is the pressure. How the, how the pressure is converted into the shear stress that factor is called as coefficient of friction and is called as local skin friction coefficient. If you want to calculate the average value of this value is tau at wall is given by C F L into half into rho into u infinity square. Now this one is a shear stress over the plate and if we multiply the shear, place, shear stress over the plate by the area of the plate we will get the drag force. So in general the drag force is given by shear stress at the wall multiplied by the area of the plate. So in general the formula of drag force become C F L multiplied by 1 by 2 into rho into a u infinity square. Number of times this average value of CFL is also known as coefficient of drag is given by CD. So this one is called as drag coefficient. The flow in a boundary layer starts as a smooth 
and streamline which is called as laminar flow so this one is called as laminar flow distance from the leading edge the flow becomes chaotic and which is called as turbulent flow so this one is called as turbulent flow and it is characterized by the velocity fluctuation and highly disordered motion the transition from laminar flow the transition from laminar flow to turbulent flow occurs over the sum region which is called as transition region so this region is called as transition region the velocity profile in the laminar region is approximately parabolic and becomes flatter in the it becomes flatter in the case of turbulent turbulent region can be characterized by three regions one is called as laminar sublayer so this one is called as laminar sublayer in this region the viscous effects are dominant then we have a buffer layer where both laminar and turbulent flow exist and then we have a turbulent layer the intense mixing of the fluid and turbulent flow enhances the heat and momentum transfer between the fluid particles which in turn which in turn increases the friction force and the convective heat transfer coefficient this question is come that how are we going to identify the flow is laminar flow is transition or the flow is turbulent for this we have to define the reynolds number and the Reynolds number in the case of force convection will categorize the flow as laminar, turbulent or in transition.